Dan Lillianquist is running for U.S. Senate to change Washington. He'll fight to make the federal government live within its means and balance the budget, tackle runaway entitlement spending, and return to the conservative principles that made this country great. Dan Lillianquist. Real conservative change starts with new conservative leadership. I'm seventh of 15 children. I have 10 brothers and four sisters. In a family that large, you don't get to dictate anything. It's all negotiation. There was plenty to do around the house, a big family. My earliest memories were cleaning my dad's office, and we had a paper out when I was a kid. And you know, from there, it was moving pipes in the potato fields of Idaho. My parents encouraged us to, to get out there and, and earn our own way and work hard. I went to BYU on a one-year renewable scholarship, and I had to keep a 3.9 GPA to keep that scholarship. So I had to work hard. I thought it was a curse at the time, but I wanted to do it on my own as much as possible. So during my last semester of BYU, my sister Sarah set me up on a blind date with, with Brooke, my wife. And uh, she was beautiful, and I went out with her, and I thought, I want to go out with her again. And I ended up asking her out 10 times, but she canceled seven of our first 10 dates. And he called me up and he said, look, I'm three for 10, but if this was baseball, I'd be an all-star. I'm gonna keep asking you out till you say no. And the rest is history, so to speak. I've always wanted to own my own business and move things forward. So, you know, after law school and working in the Fortune 500 world, I remember thinking, I've got a little family, I'm gonna have one shot to do this. And so that's when I jumped out of that world and, and joined this little company in Ogden, Utah. As a father, he is, I, could, I, can't, I really can't think of a better father. He's exactly what I need and what they need. He strikes a great balance of fun and work. In 2006, my wife and I bought a family home in Bountiful, Utah. And I, I thought, you know, I'll never really get involved in politics. And then I started looking around and thinking, I want to get involved. And so I went to a caucus meeting and saw how things worked. And as it turned out, when, when Senator Eastman was retiring, I met with him and he, he asked me, encouraged me to run for his seat. So I stepped in and ran with eight other people. I mean, he came in and where a lot of us, and I'll put myself in this boat, where we're looking at this train wreck on our state pension system, where it's gobbling up our budget. And he said, well, why don't we fix it? And I think a lot of us who'd been around, we were saying, well, it's awfully complex, it's difficult. And he just said, well, let's just fix it, and jumped in and did it. So I moved forward a bill that I thought was a common sense bill to make sure this didn't happen again. And I was in a town hall meeting, and there were 40 people there, and they were not very happy with me. And one of the gentlemen, who's a neighbor of mine, actually said, who put you up to this? And I said, nobody put me up to this. I'm the chair of the committee. It's right in front of me. And he said, well, you're not going to get reelected. And I said, first thing that came to my mind, I'm not, I wasn't elected to get reelected. I was elected to do something. They took the risks, addressed the problems, brought the people together, found excellent solutions. And now Utah continues to lead the country in fiscal management and in being one of the best run states in the country. I just love the fact that he takes on big issues and he, he doesn't view it as a, as a career. He views it as, as an opportunity to, to make real changes. When I saw what Dan did with Medicaid reform and pension reform in Utah, I figured he is the guy who can enter the United States Senate and actually get it done. A bountiful woman is praying for her husband's recovery from a plane crash in Guatemala. That plane crash killed 10 people, including two other Utah. It was August 24th, 2008, and um, I had taken down to the airport the day before to go to Guatemala. He was really excited, and he almost missed his first plane, actually. So I took the kids to church that morning by myself, and we were all pretty exhausted after that. So we lay down to take a nap and then my cell phone started ringing. And I said, hello, he said, Brooke, we've been in a plane crash. And I said, Dan, that's not funny. That's not funny. I honestly thought he was joking with me. <laughs> he said, no, we've been in a plane crash. Our plane crashed, they're all dead. 
and my legs are shattered, but I'm okay. I'm fine, but they're all gone. And I, I knew he was talking about his coworkers. I lost these good friends, um, four of my dear friends on that plane, and, and I can't, I, I don't understand everything, why things happen. And, but I know this, uh, I wanna make my life count for something. I want my service to count. So I'm, I'm in politics to try to do something. I, it's not about being someone. I want my service to count. People of this state have woken up to the fact that we cannot continue to do what we've always been doing, that we are out of money, and they want their leaders to do something about it. We've had a generation of politicians who've let this happen. We need a generation of leaders to pull ourselves out of it. I think that people are disgusted by the unmitigated arrogance that is coming out of Washington, D.C. Uh, we need to put someone back there who understands government is not the solution, that people can figure things out on their own, communities can figure things out on their own, and so I think that Dan has that perspective. It's something that D.C. can desperately use. What will save this country is a rebalancing of federalism back to the states, and I think that's what a true conservative really believes. I'm running for the U.S. Senate because it's time. It's time for a new generation of leaders to stand up and solve the challenges of today. It's time for us to live within our means as a country and balance our budgets. It's time to tackle runaway entitlement spending that threatens to sink us all. It's time to return to the conservative principles that have made this country great. Elections are about the future and I am determined to make a difference, and I need your help. It's time. Join the team today at danforutah.com. Sign up and make your voice heard. Dan Lillianquist, the only way to change Washington is to change who we send to Washington. Uh, how many ways have people spelled your name? <laughs> oh, anywhere from... Gosh, L-I-L-I-Q-U-E-S-T. Uh, -L -L -E it's pronounced Lillianquist. L-I-L-J-E-N-Q-U-I-S-T. We answered everything.